Well, here with a review of the brand new JetBeam PC10. Brand new light that came out from JetBeam with several other models they just came out with. And the reason I got this light is that I was looking for a light that I could use as a tactical type light with a sort of a weapon light. And also that had some everyday carry type functions with some lower settings. And uh, this light on paper seemed to fit that bill. So I'll get into that in a little bit, how much it did or didn't quite fit that. But let's just have a look at it. This is the case it comes in. Goes over just some of the, the basic high points of the light on the case here. CR123 battery, 550 lumens. This is a little misleading right here, which I'll explain with the battery. Uh, has the new XML, Cree XML LED, maximum runtime 177 hours, four levels of brightness, a few too many if you ask me. SOS and strobe, a few too many if you ask me, and uh, compatible with some rechargeable batteries. It even says down here, EDC tactical flashlights. So it uh, on paper, again, just seemed exactly like what I needed. It comes with this case, which JetBeam describes as durable and robust plastic carrying case. It has a handle on it that I can't ever get up. Such that if you wanted to carry it like a lunchbox, you could carry it like a lunchbox. I don't know when you would do this. I don't know why they need such a heavy case like this, but they have included one. I think this case is way overkill. I'm sure it was pretty cheap for them to make, just a little plastic molded case, but really all they needed to include was cardboard. Cardboard box like every other flashlight manufacturer does, and it would have been plenty. But here's where you get inside the case on the top here. There is the instruction manual and a sort of business card for Sysmax. Apparently they do Nightcore and Jetbeam. A lot of companies seem to be conglomerating flashlights. Like I heard that ITP just got bought out and that 4.7's lights are made by Olight. So a lot of separate companies are being kind of made by the same people, however you might want to say that. Anyway, so the instruction manual here, basic instruction manual. And then comes with, you know, the inside of the case is sort of this sort of padded foam type deal. It looks very nice. I just don't think it's all necessary for, you know, give me a cardboard box and shave a dollar or two off the price of the flashlight. Because most people are, you're not going to carry this. You're just going to throw the case out or put it in the closet. Fill up a landfill with this plastic. Anyway, let's have a look and see what they have. There's the, uh, the belt case, the carrying case. Oh, uh, suddenly I can't think of what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. Lanyard in here, and then down on the inside, which I can't get out because it's shoved down in there. There we go. Some extra O-rings, an extra tail cap. Kind of standard stuff. And then there is the light itself. Get this case out of the way. And let's have a look at the light. So... The reason that I, like I said, the reason I wanted this light, one of the reasons is because of, I was looking for a small light that I could carry, an everyday carry type light with a tactical and everyday carry user interface. So one of the great things if you're going to carry it every day is you don't want it to be too big. And this light fits the size perfectly. It's 9, 9.3 centimeters by 2.3 centimeters. Just for a comparison, I will bring in my Phoenix PD-20, and my Surefire backup. And you can get a little size comparison there. And you can see that it fits pretty much right in the middle between the two of them. So all three of them are great sizes. It's fairly, you know, fairly thin, fairly slender, and just fits in your pocket very nicely. So great on the size. Weighs in at 51 grams, which is pretty comparable with both of these. That's, of course, without a battery. A little bit more with the battery in it. The case, pretty standard. It's uh, IPX8 rated, so very works very well. I have accidentally, this is a minor test, but I've accidentally put this PD20 through the washing machine twice. It comes out just fine. So that IPX rating on these lights, again, it's a small test, but it works well. Uh, aircraft grade aluminum, alloy, military grade, hard anodized finish. Has the, the rhomboid knurling back here, the diamond shaped knurling, a little bit added grip. Pretty well. 
Let's just, uh, how about going over the light back to front. So on the back here is the tail cap. Tail cap is recessed a little bit into it, so you can tail stand it, sort of, as you can see. I seem to have some luck with this, and sometimes I have no luck. The problem is that the tail cap extends just a little bit outside. It's not quite... You can see there's a little bit of space right there. It's not quite flush with those, these two ridges or whatever right you might want to call it right here. And so you can get it to tail stand with a little bit of effort, but it can be kind of wobbly and sometimes it doesn't want to tail stand. So um, not great there. The idea is nice but that button is just a little bit too sticking out for it to sometimes tail stand. And I don't, you know, 10 minutes ago when I was trying to make this video, I could tail stand it without any problem. Just kind of depends. So not sure what the deal is with that, but they could have made that button a little bit better for tail standing. It. There you go. The button is recessed in here. So if you're going to get it from the side, it's okay. If you're going to get it from the edges here, you have to reach around a little bit to, uh, to get to it. But if you're getting it from the side, not a big deal. The button is a little on the mushy side for me. I mean, you press it just lightly and you'll get the, the momentary on. Pretty easy to press. It's a softer, mushier feel than, than this Phoenix. I mean, the Phoenix isn't a forward click. This is a forward click design, meaning you push it. And as you're pushing it forward, the light comes on. Whereas this Phoenix is a reverse click. Push it and you let go and it comes on. So the Phoenix, it's mushier, but probably this, or it's Phoenix is firmer, but this is probably, I mean, it has this feeling because it has a forward click design. Compared to the Surefire, the Surefire is a little bit firmer press than, than the Jet Beam. But just a light press will get you the instant on, and then you press it all the way, and it will hold it, hold it on. On the back here, the tail cap obviously comes off. O-ring in there, single CR123 battery. As long as we're on the battery, while I have this out here, let's just talk about the battery. So the, the specs of the flashlight say that this flashlight will do 550 lumens. Bring this case back in here. Single CR123 battery and 550 lumens. Well, so it does but it will only do 550 lumens if you're using a rechargeable CR123 battery. With a regular CR123 battery, you're only gonna get 265 lumens. So they make it a little bit misleading here. The, the person that's not reading the, what I'll consider the fine print, thinks will think, because I thought this initially before I figured it out, thinks that they're gonna get a 550 lumen regular CR123 battery flashlight. And that's not the case. You're gonna need the rechargeable. I don't have any rechargeable, so I'm just getting the 265, 265, still pretty bright, but again, just just note that. Need the rechargeables for that. Moving on down the case, there's a little bit more of the, the knurling here, and then the pocket clip. The pocket clip is not designed well. First of all, I don't like pocket clips that are that far down the flashlight, because when you put it into your pocket, there's an inch of the flashlight that's sticking out, which makes it a little bit more risk for getting caught on things and being pulled out, or I suppose even someone grabbing it and pulling it out. This Phoenix PD20 has an awesome pocket clip, has an awesome pocket clip because it is such a deep carry, and you can see that there's none of that light that's going to stick out, but there's an inch of this, this jet beam that's going to stick out, and I really don't care for that. Um, and also the pocket clip, so it has this anti-roll stuff down here which work well. However, the pocket clip goes right over those anti-roll parts. Let's see if I can bring it in to show you. There you go. So you can see the pocket clip there goes right over those. Now they have this, these sort of, uh, you know, peaks and valleys here. And the problem is if you have the pocket clip down in there, you know, you have to loosen and tighten the head to go between the modes and I've not had this light for much more than a couple of days, and if you have it down in those that one of those valleys there, you can see. Let me find something to point with here. 
How about, uh, how about a pair of hemostats? So if you have it down in these peaks and valleys, right here on both sides of this, and this happened within the first two or three minutes of me having the flashlight, it wears that finish off. So poor design there if you're going to have it down in there. And then also, so I've moved it up here, up onto you know, one of the higher points of it, which works well for that. It doesn't wear the finish off. However, it goes over roughly a sharp edge there on that part. And I think there are going to be underclip issues if you're frequently moving it in and out of your pocket. So I think it's a poorly designed clip overall in almost every aspect. It's not too tight. The tightness is okay. But it's poorly designed that it's so far down the light and it's poorly designed that either it's going to rub the finish off the light or that it's going to go over this, this sharp edge here. We're getting close. It's going to go over that sharp edge and you're going to get a little bit of that finish wearing off. So I would prefer the pocket clip be, you know, much up higher on the light. As long as we're up here, I'll give you, give you a little, little close-up of it. You can see the knurling tail cap. Anyway, my thoughts on the pocket clip, my little dissertation on that. Up here on the front, the head has a little bit of crenellations up on the front. If you needed to use this as a you know, an impact type weapon, you could, I suppose. It will stick a little bit out of your hand. Kind of the perfect size for that. Up in the front here, the head, it has a mineral glass lens with an anti-reflective coating. It's a smooth aluminum reflector, and it has the brand new Cree XML LED, which is a new LED from Cree, apparently 20% more efficient over the older XPG models, LEDs. So uh, works a little bit better there, apparently more efficient you know, you're going to get a brighter output with less battery power, so that's a nice addition to it. How about the user interface? And by the way, the head, I've not taken the head off. I think I'm going to rip all the finish off the light if I take that head off, but the head does come off, trust me. Um, anyway, user interface. So this has, like I said, both a tactical and non-tactical type uh, interface. And the way you go between those is you either loosen or tighten the head. So with the head fully tightened, I'm going to move this up out of the way here. There you go. So with the head fully tightened, every press will go to that full brightness of, in my case, 265 lumens. Half press, 265. You can hold it on, you know, full click it, and you'll get that full brightness. Again, very nice. It's the, the tactical, which is what I was looking for. You know, it's the thing I didn't like about, for instance, this Surefire is that it will go, you know, it comes on at the full brightness, and then if I click it again within two seconds, I, I end up going between the two settings. And two seconds is actually kind of a long time, so I don't care for that part about the Surefire. It's made great, but I don't like that part. So I like the idea on this, that every time I clicked it on in the tactical setting, I would get the full brightness. Now to go down to the, what I'll call the everyday carry setting or what they call the user define customized settings. You basically just loosen the head just a little bit, not very much, just about that much. And you then cycle through strobe SOS 120, 16, and one lumens. And I'll put the, the run times for each of those up on the screen. But this is one of the parts of the flashlight that I don't like. So you click it on, let me get up to the strobe. So it starts with the strobe, and the strobe, you probably can't see it in the camera, but the strobe is a, it's an irregular strobe. Instead of just the normal flashing strobe, this one goes kind of irregular, which is kind of nice. I do kind of like that. And then half press will get you down through each one, down through the different settings. The problem, so here's one of the problems. When you go from the strobe to the SOS, the SOS goes, it doesn't come on full brightness right away, and until you realize it, it gets a little bit confusing because you press it on, low SOS, and then it goes into the SOS. Half press, you press it on, low, and then it goes into the SOS. So if you're not really on top of what you're noticing, you're going to go from the, the strobe down into this, and you think you're going, and you're just going to keep clicking, so the SOS doesn't come on full brightness. Kind of a nitpicky thing, but I, that's not, I, I don't care for that. 
Um, SOS, and then you go down into 120 lumens, 16 lumens, and one lumen. I love the low output. I love the low and high output on this. I love the one lumen output, which in the dark is surprisingly bright for just, you know, simple kind of brief every everyday task, find your way around in a, in a blackout, and you're going to get 177 hours of that one lumen. So I appreciate the fact that they have one lumen. Uh, I like that. I just don't like that you have to, every time you cycle through it, you have to cycle past the strobe and the SOS. Uh, I think most of the world is not going to use those settings. Some law enforcement, some types might use the strobe. I think the likelihood that you're going to use the SOS, you know, in the several years that I've been using these flashlights in general, the amount of times I've used either of those settings for any real purpose is exactly zero. Uh, I could conce conceive of where you could use them, but for most people, they probably don't use them. Probably not going to use the SOS almost ever. To signal someone, the, the strobe is probably going to be better, although it's just not going to last as long uh, time-wise if you're going to leave it sitting on, trying to signal some planes or whatever, whatever you're going to try and signal with it. So what I would vote for those two is that you make those modes hidden, like 4.7s has done in their Prion series. And the way you go between them, I'm just going to turn the light off for a second, is you go, you have it on, you go low, meet, low, if I can do it, low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and then you go into it. Low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and into the two hitting settings, the strobe and the SOS. So I would think that would be great if this light did that, because I don't care for cycling through those every time I go through the light. Now it will remember the last setting that you've, when you turned it off, so if you left it off in one lumen as I did, it will go back onto one lumen. I don't know if you can even see that one, yeah, you can see it. So it will remember the last setting, which is nice. If you're gonna use it for an everyday carry type setting and you wanna leave it in that, that works well, I appreciate that. Also, the different thing about this compared to every other light that I've used is that instead of cycling low to high, it cycles high to low. I'm not sure why they did it backwards. Again, it's a small thing, you get used to it but I would prefer the low to high like every other light in the world does. Um, so there you go on the user interface. I don't really care for, I, I like the tactical part of it. I don't care for the everyday portion, the everyday carry user customizable side of it. I think that could have been done a lot better. How about carrying it? I've kind of touched on this a little bit. The size of it is great. I just wish this pocket clip was up higher up here so that it is a more deeper pocket carry. There's not more of a chance of it falling out of your pocket. But it's super light, it's super thin, so no big complaints there. Price of this, $69. Not too bad of a price for a, for a light like this. You know, certainly cheaper than some of the more expensive ones, like some Surefires. Uh, not bad. So, how about impressions of it overall? Um, you know... I think it's overall a good light. I think it, there are a lot of things on it that could have been done a lot better. Uh, I think the tail cap with this standing issue could have been done a lot better. I think the user interface could have been done better. I think the pocket clip could have been done better. Um, just a lot of room for improvement on this light. I was hoping it would be the perfect light, but uh, sadly it has not. It's not really. And I can't really describe why the tail cap I'm not thrilled with. Uh, the button, I'm just not for some reason. It's a fairly floody light compared to like the Surefire, which is a lot more focused. So fairly floody, um, not good or bad, just is, just to note it, just to note. And uh, I think that's about it. I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep it or not, but there is a uh, quick review for you on the Jetbeam PC10.